On Tuesday, December the 8th, 2020, the citizens of Andrew, Mississippi will be given the opportunity to vote on tourism tax. Uh, that will be located at the Old Armory in Amory, Mississippi. Everyone that wishes to vote will vote in that location. Uh, polls open at 7 and close at 7. Those wishing to vote uh, should wear their mask. Uh, it will be socially distanced within the Old Amory Armory, uh, much like the election process was had during the presidential election a couple of weeks ago. What is a tourism tax? Although it carries the moniker of tax, it is not something that we pay yearly or in advance like we do on most ad valorem taxes. It's very much like a sales tax that you currently pay 7% to the state on, of which the city gets a portion of. However, this allows the city of Amory to add an additional two cents on the dollar for prepared foods as well as lodgings at hotels and motels within the city limits of Amory. This tax can only be used by statute, by state statute, on promotion of tourism as well as parks and recreational uh, items, events, facilities, etc. What we intend on doing with this money is collecting the money for a year to determine a baseline of what will be received into the city, hopefully thereby being able to uh, dedicate a portion of the funds to renovation and construction of new developed facilities at the Concord ball field that's currently in existence, as well as doing some updates and maintenance to the Carlos Moore ball field that is also currently in existence. As many of you know, parking and recreation does not end with ball fields. It doesn't end with soccer fields. It doesn't end with baseball or softball fields. We actually have many facilities that Park and Rec uh, maintain. Many of the developments that have occurred in the past eight years have been through Park and Rec, whether that be uh, you know, maintenance and upkeep of McAlpin Lake and the enjoyment of fishing rodeos by our youth, uh, the nature trail that's enjoyed by so many in our area, uh, the uh, areas along uh, the Arboretum that's located along the Lock and Down. Uh, as well as you know, Park and Rec does not begin and end with ball fields. It isn't limited to soccer fields, softball fields, baseball fields. It's much broader than that. Our city playgrounds that are enjoyed by our children, our splash pad in Frisco Park, our stage area in Frisco Park, many of our pocket parks, the land along the Lock and Down that we call the Arboretum, Frisbee Golf Course, the Nature Trail, McAlpin Lake, many of our welcome signs, all of these are associated with Park and Rec and are maintained by that department. These are also areas that can be further developed to bring uh, more enjoyment to these facilities as well as bring people to town to enjoy them as well. Also, Park and Rec supports many events through town, movies in the park, they're instrumental in helping with uh, Amory Main Street Association with putting on events such as the Chili Festival. They've been instrumental in helping uh, Junior Auxiliary in the past with events that have happened downtown. And oftentimes, they go unnoticed with some of the things that they perform around town through their marketing and through their uh, manpower that's used in these events. Certainly, uh, Park and Rec is an instrumental part of our community. If we renovate these things, we are hopeful that that will enable uh, more enjoyment from our children to play Park and Rec sports at these facilities as well as enjoy the other amenities that I mentioned but also it will contribute to being able to host ball tournaments in the future, which brings further revenue into town, not just from the tournament itself, but also from people choosing to stay or people choosing to eat here while they participate in such tournaments. The current facilities that we are using at this time were developed in the early 80s and have not been developed further than that uh, to any major degree since such time. And, and it's time for that. It's time for, for facilities to be upgraded uh, to be renovated and to be put into proper use for enjoyment and for productivity with regard to bringing revenue into town. Also with regard to the promotion of tourism, our Park and Rec uh, Department is instrumental in helping and enabling such to take place in our uh, downtown area as well as other places. Uh, whether those be horse shows that bring people to town, again ball tournaments that bring people to town, the events that they uh, assist with through the marketing and manpower. Uh, whether that be uh, hopefully some concerts that happen downtown on our new stage uh, once we're out of this pandemic and we can enjoy Frisco Park again, uh, promotes the people coming to Amory. It's a fair tax. Uh, even though it is a tax, it's a fair tax. Many of the people that enjoy our facilities currently live outside our city limits. In the past, we've only been able to maintain or construct or develop these items that I've mentioned before by increasing ad valorem taxes, which places the burden squarely on the backs and the shoulders of the residents of Amory. While Amory citizens are very helpful in the payment of their taxes and helping promote uh, what we currently have in participation with, with ball teams, with participation in enjoying our facilities, 
We also realize that there's a large number of people outside of Amory that enjoy these facilities on a regular basis, whether they be participating in our park and rec programs, whether they be hosting tournaments, whether they be using our facilities, and we feel that it's fair for them to help support these facilities, especially developmentally wise, so everybody can continue to enjoy better and better things and enjoy a better quality of life as we continue to move forward. As many of you know, as you travel to Tupelo or Fulton or Columbus, when you go out to eat or you stay in lodging in those areas, you too pay a tourism tax. In fact, you're supporting the tourism and the parks and rec facilities in those locations when you travel there. And there's no problem with that, but what we're asking is that when those individuals decide to travel to Amory, when they come here to enjoy the things and they eat with us and they shop with us and they stay with us, we want them to also contribute to the quality of life here in Amory. Now, what gets done with the tourism tax when it's collected? By state law, it cannot go into the general fund. In fact, it can't go into a departmental fund. It has to have its own separate fund from which it has to be, at the discretion of the board, decided upon how it is to be used. As stated before, we want a portion of that to be used on facilities, upgrading, doing new things to our facilities. But we don't want to use all the money on that. We want to also save some of that money to promote the events, the things that happen downtown, the things that bring crowds to town. We want to help with marketing. We want to help put on more events if that's a possibility. But as I said before, we want to collect this tax for a year to determine how much money we're dealing with in hopes that it will be cyclical. If we have more events and we have better facilities, the more people we hope to bring to town. The more people we bring to town, the more tourism tax dollars we can collect. And the more tourism tax dollars we can collect, we can put back into the facilities, into future development, into more events, and to make the events bigger and better than they already are. So when asking for your vote, we're just asking you to consider the things that could be done with tourism tax to promote the quality of life here in Amory to benefit not just the citizens, but the community, and ask the community, not just the citizens of Amory, to help support that to take place. Whether you vote yes or you vote no, we're just asking that you vote. Consider the information, vote what you think is best for our community, and we'll be now, considering something important to understand about voting. Absentee voting is currently taking place. You can come to City Hall in the City Clerk's Office and vote in person for the rest of this week and all day Saturday until 5 p.m. Also, you can mail in a ballot. You would need to contact our city clerk's office. They can mail you the ballot and you can mail it back in so long as it's postmarked by December the 8th. So if you feel like you can absentee vote, which current law permits those that are dealing with COVID issues, whether you be taking care of someone that has COVID or you've been exposed, you can vote vote by mail in an absentee ballot. If you can just contact our clerk's office, we can get one to you. If you're unable to vote in person on the day of the election for whatever reason that would normally preclude you from voting and then would give you the ability to vote by absentee, you can vote absentee in person by presenting yourselves to the clerk's office from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. the remainder of this week as well as from 8 a.m. until 5 p.m. all day this Saturday. So there are options for you to vote if you are not comfortable with voting at the Armory on December the 8th. Again, we're just asking you to consider the issues, consider what type of Amory you want in the future, whether or not you want your quality of life to continue to continue the way it is now, step by step, as we've done in the past, or whether you want to bolster it a bit with this tourism tax. Vote yes or vote no, we're just asking for your vote. We ask you to all be safe, and we thank you for listening to this information, and wish you the best. Thank you.